What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to show how you can add a large crater to a live action shot inside of Blender 3D, similar to a lot of the shots you would see in those disaster apocalyptic movies. In addition to this, we will also cover how you can create a more apocalyptic feel by distributing some nature assets across your scene and using some weight painting to distribute those assets effectively. Before we get started, if you missed our announcement, we have collaborated with the Nasarga nature add-on to create a Nasarga light spider fi bundle where you can get lots of nature assets in addition to our spider five void system add-on so feel free to check out the link in the description below if you want to get that value pack on blender market I will also be using that specific pack as the nature assets that we distribute in this tutorial but of course you can also use any asset of your choice anyways guys let's get started here we are inside of blender as usual let's just delete everything in our scene here to get started and uh, I'm going to go to the render properties tab here we'll switch to cycles and the first thing we're going to do for this tutorial is is, uh, import some footage and track it so that the 3d camera in our blender scene matches our live action footage and we can integrate the CGI that we're adding into our live action world so I'll just go up here to the plus checkbox and I'll go to visual effects and then motion tracking and now as you can see a motion tracking uh, tab will come up here and I'll just click on open and navigate to our footage that we want to add to our scene here and I just have this aerial shot here so I'll just select it and open it and now as you can see here we have our footage in this uh, bottom panel here and I'll go ahead and select set scene frames and that's going to make our blender scene have the same amount of frames that we have for our clip here and in addition to that I will also click on prefetch which will just load all of our frames into blender so that the video clip doesn't buffer. All right, so this is the shot that we're working with here. And what we're gonna try to do is add a crater right past this bridge here. So uh, it's a good idea to just scroll through your footage, get an idea of what's happening, obviously. And now let's get to tracking our footage. And I've covered 3D tracking in detail in another video, but I'll try to do a basic overview for this tutorial as well. So in 3D tracking your footage, there are a lot of different ways you can do this, but the key is getting enough points in both the foreground of your shot and the background of your shot throughout the course of your shot so uh, one way you can do this is uh, just by manually adding keyframes so there are a lot of different settings you can change here this shot is fairly controlled so I don't think we need to increase the pattern or search size very well very much but I will go here and just uh, select blurry footage and that's just going to increase our pattern size and search size a tiny bit, which uh, might help us get a little bit more accurate track. So we'll use those settings. And uh, what we can do if you want to do this manually and your shot is particularly difficult, you can just uh, find points of contrast in your scene here, maybe like this uh, dry spot in uh, our riverbed here and just click. And then as you can see here, this is your tracking point. And then of course you can just track throughout your scene here and that point will stay on that specific point in your scene and then you just do that a whole bunch of times all over your footage in both the foreground and background and you should have a pretty good track making sure that you have at least eight tracking points throughout your entire footage that the computer can utilize to give you a 3d recreation of your camera but uh, this can be a little bit tedious and since this shot is pretty stable what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the detect features option which uh, as you can see here if I go to the beginning of the clip I could just click on on detect features and blender is just going to choose a bunch of different points of contrast around the scene for me and then I can just go to under the track settings I can just track forward with these tracking points and then I can go click on one frame back from the end of our scene click on detect features again then track this one backwards And you can see that there's gonna be some errors here in some of our tracking data, but don't worry, we're going to clean up our track later. All right, and now Blender has gone through our points from the end of our shot. And then I might also go to the middle of our scene here, just do one more detect features, uh, select detect features one more time at the middle of our shot, and then I'll track this one forward. Then go back to the middle of our shot and then track it backwards as well. And now we have a lot of data to work with to recreate our camera. So now that we have a lot of different tracking points in our scene, we want to clean up our track. And uh, as you can see here, if we just scroll through our timeline, the first thing you can do is just check in your uh, footage here to see if any of the tracking points are kind of slipping off their points of contrast. So um, I can see here, for example, this one off on the right, it uh, starts going off of its track point right about here so I might just totally uh, delete this point of contrast you can also 
clear the keyframes for a certain tracking point just past the current position or you know in front of the current position but I'll just delete this specific track since we have plenty of other tracking points to work with and I'll just keep scrolling through here looking just on our footage to see if there are any points that are leaving their tracking data and I can see one here you can see that it kind of uh, slips off of its tracking point so I'll just press X while that is selected and delete that one as well and another thing you can do in addition to uh, just looking with your eyes on your tracking points and seeing where they're slipping off is you can look at your graph here and uh, what you're looking for here is points that differ a lot from the rest of the uh, graph here so as you can see here some of these points like uh, this green one right here looks like it's traveling way further away from the rest of the points so that's a good indicator that it's not quite tracking very well at that specific moment in the timeline and as you can see that's exactly when the uh, tracking point moves off of its uh, point of contrast and we can go ahead and just press X and delete that one and as you can see it uh, disappeared there so this is one way you can kind of clean up your track another way to do this is uh, by going to uh, the solve section here and I'll go ahead and select all of our tracking points really quick and what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the cleanup track section here but first we have to solve our camera and see what see if it gives us a big error so under the solve panel I want to do a few things here before we click on solve camera motion um, first I can choose our keyframes here keyframe a and keyframe B we, what we want to choose here is two keyframes where the camera moves quite a bit and for this shot the camera is pretty consistent in its movement so frame 1 to frame 30 should be pretty good I'll leave that at its default but for example if the camera didn't move from frame 1 to frame 30 and then all of a sudden the camera moves around quite a bit from frame 30 to frame 60 then maybe you want to change keyframe a and keyframe B to frame 30 and 60 so uh, I'll just leave this as default for now I also want to refine our focal length k1 and k2 and if you have your lens data as well as your camera data you don't necessarily need to do this because uh, you can plug your camera data into the uh, camera settings here on this uh, right side however I just downloaded this shot online so I don't really know all the camera data so I'm going to have blender guess the focal length and the optical qualities of our camera using its refine tool here and you can also uh, refine other elements as well but I found that this uh, focal length k1 k2 is pretty good you can also click on the keyframe option here just so blender can guess your keyframe a and keyframe b which uh, is not a bad option as well and now i'll just click on solve camera motion and blender is going to go through all of our frames and solve our camera and now as you can see here we have a solve error of 38.13 pixels which is not good at all you want it at least under five for a good uh, track but I shoot for under two because then that's a really solid track but uh, 38 is definitely not gonna be good enough so what we can do here is we can uh, clean up our track through our cleanup tab here in addition to of course just going through and manually deleting some of the tracks so I'll just go back to track here and I'll uh, start cleaning it up some manually this one right here looks a little bit off so I'll just delete that one and this one right here is a little off as well you can start selecting some of these via the graph here as well as you can see here this one's sliding off delete that one we got one sliding here delete that one got some more sliding here and it's generally pretty easy to see once they're off the graph this one right here is sliding a bit delete it and actually a bunch of these points end up slipping once they once the bridge crosses over so I'll just go ahead and clear the keyframes before All right, this is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and try to track our shot one more time. Select all of our tracking data here. Go to solve, solve camera motion. And now as you can see here, got a solve error of 2.76, which is pretty solid. Um, now what we can do here is see if we can get this a little bit lower. We can go to clean tracks. If you want to try to refine uh, reprojection errors of a certain value or below so for example if we set up our clean tracks to select anything with a reprojection error of six or above you can uh, see that these tracks have a reprojection error of six or above so we can delete these and you can solve camera motion again it's probably gonna be now even lower than 2.01 
and there you go now we got 1.38 um, now let's go ahead and set up our scene inside of the 3d world so now what I want to do is I want to first under our right panel here in the 3d view I want to press shift a gonna go ahead and add a camera to our scene just so we can attach our 3d tracking data to this camera then uh, what we can do here is under the scene setup option under solve we can press set as background which uh, is going to set up our tracking scene so that this uh, video footage will be our background for our camera and then I also want to do some things with orientation here so I want to set the origin of our scene which uh, is kind of where the camera is going to point at generally so since I want to add our crater to this part of the footage I'm gonna go ahead and just select maybe this point right here and then click on set origin and now the point of 000 in our 3d scene will be uh, this point in our world and then also what we can do is create a floor for our scene so I'll just choose three points that will be kind of the floor for the 3d world here probably something like these three so one two three and then I'll click on floor and now when we click on set up tracking scene here as you can see here on the top right we have a nice ground plane which will be our shadow catcher as well as a cube as a placeholder for any CG stuff that we're gonna add to our scene right to where our floor would be the ground plane here is going to be in line with these three tracking points that we've added as the floor to our scene which is perfect for adding CG elements and uh, yeah this should be pretty good for our tracking portion of the tutorial now let's go to uh, layout mode here and now what we want to do is uh, kind of position our ground plane to the riverbed in our scene. So I'll go ahead and just open up a side window here, go to view, viewpoint, camera. And now as you can see here, this is our 3D tracked camera. If we play through it, you can see the 3D tracking uh, geometry and the tracking points are stuck on our scene and our cube here is uh, kind of around our camera which is not what we want but it gives you an idea of how the camera is moving throughout 3d space so and now let's go ahead and set up our ground plane to be the geometry of our riverbed here so i'm going to go ahead and select our cube and just delete it and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select our ground plane here and as you can see in our right panel here under our collection tab here we have two different collections here one is our foreground collection and one is our background collection and I'll go and uh, I'll go into more detail on this in a bit but pretty much anything that you want to add on top of your scene should go in this foreground collection and this background collection is just for your shadow catcher object so in this case it's just the ground plane here that will only render your shadows and as you can see here as the ground is selected we'll go to object properties here and go to visibility and you can see that it's a shadow catcher and also by clicking set up tracking scene in your motion tracking process like we did earlier it's going to create another uh, view layer called background which is going to if you turn on all of your restriction toggles here you can see that with the background view layer selected you're going to have a foreground that only renders the indirect lighting in other words is only going to accept shadows from this foreground layer that will create them on top of your background layer and then of course your background layer includes your ground that is a shadow catcher only and then for your foreground uh, view layer as you can see here your background is set as a holdout layer so in other words uh, the ground plane here or anything under this background layer is going to hide anything below it as kind of a mask which is going to help you composite your CGI into your live action um, this is a little bit confusing uh, view layers is not something I've totally got my head around but pretty much how this works is when you're compositing your different elements together you'll have two different view layers in your compositor uh, that will be rendered out in different ways depending on the settings you have for both the foreground and the background in each view layer so uh, I know that's kind of confusing but uh, don't worry if you follow along with this tutorial uh, everything should make sense but uh, just keep in mind that we have two view layers going here and as long as you follow the steps in the compositing tab everything should be already set up for you in a way that already integrates your CG into your live action so uh, just follow along and you should be good so yeah let's go ahead and select our ground plane here I'm going to subdivide our plane here a few times so I'll just go to edit mode edge subdivide maybe just do it like 10 times we might do it again later I'll scale it up on the x-axis and I just want to maybe rotate it a little bit and what I'm trying to do is just line up our ground plane to our riverbed here and I'm sure there are easier ways to do this but this is how I do it 
All right, so now as you can see here, got a nice ground plane that's acting as our riverbed. And we're going to add a crater right about here. And I'm going to subdivide this plane one more time, but before I do that, I want to actually model this part of our riverbed as well, just very roughly so that we can, if we want, distribute some nature assets along uh, the side of the riverbed as well. So what I'm going to do is just select the uh, side portion of our ground plane here, extrude it a bit along the Y axis, bring it up a little bit. So now we kind of have a, uh, little angle on our river something like that and then I'll do the same thing on this left side here just extrude it and you can get really precise with this but I don't plan on doing anything too crazy so just gonna kind of sketch this out here just try to make sure each side matches and uh, yeah this should be pretty good now I'm going to uh, just select our entire ground plane here in edit mode and I'll just go to edge subdivide subdivide it one more time and the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to distribute some of those nature assets on top of this using a weight painting system and in order to distribute those assets as we want to and control that whole process we want to make sure that there are plenty of subdivisions in this uh, ground plane so maybe just boost this up to something like this. All right, so now that we have a ground plane for our riverbed, now it's time to create our crater. So I'll go ahead and bring this window down here. And you can make your crater out of anything you want, but uh, I'm going to just maybe use, I'll just use a UV sphere. Let's just bring it up here for now, get it out of the way, scale it up a bit. I'll go to edit mode and just delete. And I'll just delete the top half of it. We have a little crater. And I might just select our proportional edit option. And I might just select all of these, scale it up a little bit, maybe scale a little bit on the X axis so we get a little oval shape. And you can add some shape to this. You can go into sculpt mode, give it some variation and shape. I'm not gonna go too crazy here, but it's nice to give it a little bit of variation. Try not to mess up the top of your crater because we're gonna use that to mold with our ground plane. Get a nice shape that you want. You can turn on dynamic topology as well if you wanna give some more detail to certain parts, uh, but this is totally up to you. All right, so this should be pretty good. Again, try to leave the top part of your crater fairly intact. Now I'll go back to object mode. And as you can see here, our sphere that we've added as our crater is in our background collection, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and move it to our foreground collection. And I'm also just gonna rename it crater. And now let's go ahead and place our crater in our scene. So I'll just uh, bring it down here, place it under our riverbed. Just eyeballing it here for now anyway. Scale it down. All right, something like this should be pretty good. Now we want it to just be a little bit, pretty much right on our background ground plane. And I think this is gonna look pretty good. Yeah, we'll go with this. So now what we want to do that now that we've placed our crater is actually um, use a Boolean modifier to cut out this portion of our ground plane so that our ground plane doesn't hide our crater. And even though our ground plane is our shadow catcher only layer, as you can see here on our foreground layer settings, holdout is also enabled on this layer. So what that means is it's going to hide anything below it, which obviously is not good since our crater is right below it. So what we want to do is we want to just use our crater data to cut out a portion of our ground plane here using a boolean modifier so i'll just select our ground plane here i'll go to modifiers and we'll add a boolean modifier and we'll select our crater here and now as you can see here if we're using the different option let's see here i think you can use you can either use union or difference i think either one would work can't really tell which one's best, to be honest. Union is going to keep anything that goes through it. I think I wanna use difference here. So now as you can see here, the, our crater is just cutting out a portion of our ground shadow catcher. I'll just go ahead and apply this Boolean modifier. And as you can see here, if I go back to camera view, and go to rendered you can see that we have a crater here and our shadow catcher isn't rendering anything since we don't have any shadows to catch um, but this is kind of our general uh, setup here so now we can add our materials and other aspects of our crater 
and when we render it out, it will be overlaid on top of our live action footage with a shadow catcher. All right, so now that we've cut out a portion of our ground plane here, now let's set up our crater with some very basic materials. Uh, before I do this, this is a good time to save our project. So I'll just go to file, save as, call it crater shot tutorial. All right, so first let's go ahead. I'm just going to uh, delete our light here. Just we're gonna add some sun later. And before I add the materials to our crater, I'm going to go to our world properties tab here. And I just want to add a very basic environment texture. I'll just use an HDRI that I've downloaded that looks similar to our live action shot. So lots of great HDRIs on HDRI Haven. That's where I got this one. So just download one of those and use it in your world settings. And I'll just bring down the strength to maybe 0.85. And I'll also turn off ambient occlusion. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. All right, now let's select our crater here. And I'll go to our shading tab. And we'll go to uh, cycles rendering here. Go to uh, our camera view here. And we'll just create a new material for our crater. I'm gonna go ahead and press shift A, add a new texture, image texture, connect this to our base color, open. And I just downloaded a very basic rocks texture from texture.com. I'll go ahead and open that. All right, so now that we've added our rocks texture to our crater, uh, what I wanna do is I want to go to UV editing and I just want to select our entire crater here in edit mode and I'll just press U. And there are several different ways we can unwrap our crater here. You can use smart UV project, that might be a good one. Uh, for this specific tutorial, I'm going to use the sphere projection though. And now as you can see here on our right side, we have a nice sphere projection for our crater on our rock texture. And I'll just select our entire crater here and just scale it up full size here. And of course you can play around with a lot of different um, texture techniques for your crater, uh, but I'm gonna go with just a very basic unwrap here using sphere projection. And I'll just go back to our shading tab here and I'll go to uh, rendered mode and see what we're getting so far. And as you can see here, I have our HDRI background, which is not what we want. Uh, we want to render this on transparent mode. So I'll just go to our render properties tab here, go to film, go to transparent. And now we can see what our crater is going to look like with our nice background. Our projection is looking okay. I'm not a huge fan, but uh, we'll go with it for now and keep adding some more things and come back to it if it's still giving us issues. Uh, but as you can see, just a very basic rock texture. Uh, to add a little bit more detail to our crater here, I might just duplicate our rock texture here. I'll plug in the color value to the displacement, maybe add a uh, RGB curves here, give it some contrast on the displacement node to kind of give it some roughness, a little bit more of a rock feel. And of course you can use your own uh, texture maps or uh, you know displacement maps and stuff, but this is one way you can use just one color diffuse texture to add some more detail to your material. We'll try something like this, plug in the color to maybe the roughness as well, duplicate this curves, just gonna give us a little specular map. Just give it a little bit of contrast there and maybe bring up the metallic a bit. Just gives us a nice little um, uh, shiny feel. Might increase that a little more. And now as you can see, now we're getting a nice rocky look. You can see that the dark points are looking like they're almost a little bit um, damp, like they're you know in the earth here. Might increase that a bit more. And this is looking pretty cool in my opinion, you know, not the perfect way to create a material obviously, but I think it'll work for the sake of this tutorial, but uh, feel free to play around with your own materials there. We're gonna go with this for now. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of overlap here with our ground, so I might bring down our crater a little bit. Now our crater is totally in the ground here. And uh, one thing I might do in uh, looking back in retrospect is maybe add a little bit of variation in the edge of our crater where the crater is around our ground. As you can see, it's perfectly circular here, which is not obviously uh, as you would see in real life in nature, but uh, we're gonna keep rolling with it here and add some more variation to hopefully create a little bit more realism. But this is looking pretty good. As you can see here, if I uh, go to rendered mode, I'll change our render samples to 32 then go to layout mode. If you look at our shot here, we've already added an HDRI for our environmental lighting, but we do have some pretty hard shadows here going on. Our sun for the scene is actually off to the left of our camera here in the background, a little bit of a side light. So I might just press shift A, we'll add a light, add a sunlight, and we'll just put this off to the side here. Just rotate it over, something like this, and just try to match that environmental lighting to the rest of our scene. And then I will uh, go to our lighting tab here, increase the strength to maybe 10, 
change the color to something slightly warmer. And now as you can see, if we go to rendered mode here, we're getting a little bit of environmental lighting that's kind of matching our live action shot in addition to our HDRI. So something to play around with. It's always important to match your CG lighting to your live action shot when you're combining the elements together. All right, so this is looking like a pretty nice crater here so far. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some nature assets on a particle system to uh, create some nature growing within the crater here. So go back to solid mode here. And now what I wanna do, I'll go ahead and select our foreground collection. We'll open up our Nasarga light tab here. As I mentioned, we have an add-on pack available with all these nature assets. You got all sorts of different nature assets here. We're going to be using some trees as well as some uh, bushes and grass. But first we'll start off maybe with some uh, bushes here. And as you can see here, lots of different uh, bushes to choose from. Might try something like this fern here, like it's growing in our crater. So I'll select that in our add-on panel. I'll select make editable so that it comes into our scene and we can move it around and edit some of the materials if we want to. Then I'll just click on add Nasarga asset. And as you can see here, a nice little nature asset comes into the center of your scene. Let's go ahead and press M. I'll add it to a new collection. We'll call it nature. Press OK. And we'll move our nature collection to our foreground. So that's in our foreground collection. And I will just uh, maybe scale this specific asset down. And we're going to be distributing these across a particle system. So we're not going to be placing them specifically in the crater here. But I might place a few on the edge of our crater here just to blend in our crater to the rest of the live action shot. So since our crater is so circular, it might be nice to add some nature to hide that theme a little bit. So I'll just place that one there for now. And now let's select our crater. I'll go to our particle system tab here, add a new particle system, make it a hair particle system, and we'll select the advanced option. And under render, we'll change the render as to collection. Then we'll go to instance collection nature. And now as you can see here, we're getting a bunch of nature assets on top of our crater here. And the reason it's going on the outside of our crater here and not inside the crater is because our normals are flipped. So what we can do here is you can either change your normal setting here to negative or we can actually flip the normals on our uh, crater here. So before I do that, I'll just kind of go to viewport display here and bring down the amount displayed here to 5% for our particle system so we can work a bit faster and I'll just go to edit mode really quick here. And I think, let's see here, under uh, mesh, we can go to normals and we can flip them. And now if we go back to object mode, you can see that your nature assets will be on the inside of your uh, crater here instead of the outside like they were before, which is just perfect. And now I can go to viewport display. I'll increase our viewport display to maybe 20%. And now let's adjust some of these particle settings to distribute this nature asset inside of our crater here. So one thing I like to do when I'm working with particle systems is change the scale of the particles as well as the scale randomness. So I'll increase the scale randomness to maybe 0.7, which is going to add some variation in our assets. And then I'll increase the scale to maybe 0.15 which is not bad. Then I'll also select the rotation option and we will increase the randomize phase. And then I'll increase the randomize phase to just add some variation between it from asset to asset, which will get make it a lot more organic. And uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now let's add a few more assets to our nature collection so that it's not just one asset being distributed inside of our crater here. I'll uh, go ahead and go back to our Nisarga light tab here. And this time we'll maybe use, um, we'll use maybe trees. Got lots of trees to choose from. Might be cool to have some of these uh, trees growing up in our crater. For example, one of these mangroves. This mangrove has lots of roots on it, so it might be cool to have them inside of our crater. So we'll just try it out. Click on Add Nasarga Asset. And as you can see here, another great asset. Scale it down. We'll press M, we'll move it to our foreground nature collection. So now automatically it's already in our particle system as well. And we just need to find a place for this uh, singular asset here. Maybe I'll just place it alongside our crater here. All right, something like that for now. Now we have both our tree asset as well as our kind of fern asset here distributed on that particle system. And uh, yeah, let's give this a test render and see what we're getting so far. So I'll just go to render and 
render image and let's see what we get. All right, so this is our test render so far and it's looking pretty nice here. As you can see here, some roots coming up from our tree roots in our particle system. So uh, we might need to clean that up a little bit, but generally looking pretty good. I think the sun is a little bit bright as well, but in my opinion, the main thing that's a little bit off about the scene other than some kind of basic compositing with some atmospheres and stuff like that that we can add later is just the general seam along our edge here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, after we kind of clean up our roots here um, and maybe scale down our tree so it's not quite as prevalent on the right side here. Um, after we do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to distribute some grass and other nature assets kind of on the top part of our crater here around the base of it to help blend everything together a little bit more seamlessly. So let's go ahead and just close our render view here and uh, I will go ahead and select our crater or maybe I'll select our tree here really quick first and just scale this down a little bit so it's just not quite as uh, prevalent of a root here and I'll go to the crater particle settings here as well and just maybe decrease the scale a little bit to 0.13 try that out and uh, yeah this should be pretty good I'll go to our uh, Sun grab our Sun move it to our foreground layer and now let's uh, select our background ground plane here I'll press shift D and duplicate it and we'll move this one up to our foreground layer and uh, we're going to call this layer um, grass ground and now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute some grass assets along this ground plane here so again I'll go to our particle tab here add a new particle system hair particle system check the advanced checkbox then I'll disable it for a second here just to get rid of those hair particles and I want to add a few more Nisarga assets here I'll just go to maybe we'll add some let's see here some nice grass assets here we'll add this one scale it down and then I'll press M I'll move this to a new collection we'll call it grass assets press OK and we'll move this collection to our foreground layer and we'll add a few more Nasarga assets here and you can use any nature assets you want but uh, I'm just using these specific ones maybe I'll try some bushes Here's some nice bushes. Um, we'll try some of these. Ocotillo, click on that one, add that to the scene, scale it down, press M, move it to our grass asset collection. Then I'll choose one more asset here, let's see. I will use the, we'll use this one, Tomerix Gallica. Select that, add it, scale it down. I'm feeling that's gonna be a nice one. Again, I'll press M, move it to our grass asset collection select our ground plane again our grass ground plane re-enable it in viewport scroll down here to render render as collection instance collection I'll change it to grass assets and now as you can see here we got a bunch of these grass assets distributed across the plane here uh, they're a little bit small right now and also we want to distribute them only around our crater here so we'll do that in a second here but first I want to add some random rotation to our assets so I'll go here I'll check the rotation checkbox adjust our phase a little bit of the rotation and then I'll increase the randomized phase a little bit all right so this should be pretty good for now I'll also increase the scale of these real quick maybe we'll try 0.08 all right something like that is pretty good and I also want to make sure to deselect show emitter because we don't actually want the ground plane that's um, containing these assets to show because we want the ground plane that's under our background layer to be rendered as a shadow catcher and if we enable this one as well it's just going to create a shadow across our whole shadow catcher and the only thing we want to render from this grass ground system is the actual assets that are distributed across the system but not the actual plane itself so I'll deselect our show emitter option and also under our object properties tab here we want to make sure that it's not a shadow catcher and uh, yeah these should be the right visibility settings I'll uh, come back to it in a second after we do a test render but this looks right and uh, yeah now what we're going to do is use a weight painting technique so that our nature assets are only distributed around the base of our crater here so first I'll uh, go scroll down here since my computer is uh, stuttering a little bit I want to decrease the viewport display to 5% Maybe we'll try 10% just so uh, we have a little bit more speed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to weight paint mode here and going to go to our object data properties. I'm gonna add a new vertex group. We'll call this grass. And now what we can do is we can draw a gradient over here really quick. So pretty much everything that's red is where your nature assets are gonna be. 
So now that we've added a gradient to this uh, plane here, all the red is going to be where we distribute these nature assets. So what we wanna do is actually take away the red from anywhere we don't want them distributed. So I'll go here to our weight brush here. I'll bring the weight down to zero. And then I'll just start taking away anywhere I don't want the nature assets. We literally only want them right by our uh, crater. And this is the reason why we subdivided our plane so much earlier in the tutorial was so that we can have this detail in our weight painting process. Try this out for now. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Everything that's red is where we want our nature assets to be distributed. Um, so this is looking good. I'll go back to our normal object mode here. Then I'll go to our particle system tab. And as you can see here, nothing has changed in our particle system yet. That's because we need to use our vertex group that we've just created in our particle system. So we'll go back to our particle system tab here under vertex groups. We'll go under the density option here and select grass. And now, as you can see here, our grass is only showing up where we've weight painted those values. Let's see what it looks like when we increase our viewport display. Try 50%. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, lots more nature where that red portion of our weight painted vertex group is. I might increase the size of our nature assets a little bit as well. Do 0.15 maybe, something like this. And uh, yeah, let's uh, see what we're looking at in viewport mode here. Looking pretty nice. Might increase the scale randomness in our render settings here. Boost this up to 0.7 then also increase the scale once again to 0.8. And now let's uh, maybe scroll up here, increase the number of nature assets, maybe to 1400. We'll try 2000, boost it up quite a bit. I'll go ahead and save our project just in case something happens. This is looking pretty good. I think we're gonna have some nicely distributed assets here. Let's go to render image and see what we're getting so far. All right guys, so this is our second test render here and it's looking pretty nice. As you can see here, we have our bridge here in the foreground that we need to actually mask out so uh, these nature assets aren't overlaid on top of it, but generally looking pretty good. As you can see also, we have some of these nature assets on our ground plane going a little bit sideways here, which is not what we want. And I do need to adjust the lighting a bit as well. So let's go ahead and do that and do a final test render before we export our passes for compositing. So I'll go ahead and close this window here and go back to layout. and. I've noticed that we have two empties in our background layer which are causing some issues so I'll go ahead and select those and delete them and now I'll select our background ground plane here and one thing we want to do for our ground plane for the background is actually add a material for it it's important to add a material for the ground plane even though it's just rendering your shadows because as you can see here under the object properties tab here for your visibility all of your ray visibility is going to be uh, rendered even though it's still a shadow catcher which means that the light will be bouncing off of this ground plane and actually lighting your nature assets from below which will create create more realistic lighting if this ground plane is of a similar color as the actual live action ground in the scene. So what we want to do is we want to go to the material settings here, add a new material for our ground plane, and then we just want to change the base color to maybe uh, something brown here in the background so that that light doesn't bounce up back on our nature assets quite as harshly and it creates a little bit more of a realistic environment for our live action scene. So this is looking pretty good here. Our scene is kind of busy here, so I'm might go to our motion tracking setup here and just disable those settings so we can see everything a bit nicer. And there's some empties in our scene here that I need to delete as well and just clean up our scene a bit. But let's just select our ground plane here, our ground plane with our particle system here. And let's just make sure that our assets are not going sideways like they used to be. So I changed our angular velocity, our phase a little bit, which should help that. Let's scroll down here to amount, just boost this up to 100% for now, just for a second to see what those assets are doing. As you can see here, still getting some sideways assets here, which is not what we want. It might be an issue with the asset itself and its orientation, but I'm not really sure here. Let's see, as you can see, I'm just talking about these assets going sideways here. So this one is actually going sideways for whatever reason. So what we need to do is we need to go to edit mode, it's not allowing us to go to edit mode. Let's see here. 
All right, guys, so the reason I couldn't go back to edit mode is because these Nasarga assets are specifically linked to the scene, but not actually local in the scene. So in order to uh, edit these specifically, all you have to do is just go to object uh, relations here and then go to make local and then all. And now, as you can see here, I can go to edit mode as any object is selected. And what we can do in order to get our asset to sit upright, we can just rotate it something like that should be pretty good go back to object mode go back to viewpoint camera now as you can see our assets are staying up here and uh, yeah this should be pretty good now let's go ahead and prepare our render settings for this shot so what I want to do is I'll go to our uh, layer properties tab here and I want to select our background view layer really quick I actually want to render out a mist pass for our background, which is going to give us a, a little bit of depth for our compositing process. Then we'll go back to foreground. And our foreground is going to be our main layer, obviously. So this is uh, all looking pretty good here. Might enable this denoising data really quick. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. Under our render samples, I'll keep it at maybe, I'll try something like 28 since we're enabling denoising. Under advanced, I'll enable the seed stopwatch for some noise variation. Uh, I'm not sure I want motion blur, maybe a little bit, but I'll uh, dial down the shutter to maybe 0.3. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. I'll go ahead and change our file format to OpenEXR. Choose an output for our main beauty pass. We'll call it beauty pass crater. Accept. Go to the compositing tab here, and now we want to add a file output for our mist pass, as well as our shadow pass. So uh, we want our background mist pass to go to a mist pass output. So I'll press shift A, add an output, file output, connect mist pass to it, and then I'll create a new folder for it. So I'll call it crater mist pass, accept. And then finally, one more file output for our background layer for our shadow pass. So I'll press shift A, go to file output, connect our image for our background view layer to this file output and we'll rename this file output to crater shadow pass except and now what we have here is we have two file outputs for our background layer aka our shadow pass we have the uh, main image from our background shadow pass going to a file output here we have a mist pass going to a file output for our background layer as well which is going to create that mist pass and then finally for our composite we want to connect our composite node here which is our main file output that we created in our output tab here we want to connect the image to that and now we should have three file outputs that we can composite in our compositor of choice if you want to export from blender just keep it like it was go into its composite then your main output here that you've created will just be that final composite that you can see in your compositing tab here through your viewer node but uh, yeah that's how you can export your passes and uh, yeah before we finish up this tutorial let's just check out our background layer really quick and one thing I noticed here is that our nature and grass assets that we are distributing inside of our both our crater and our uh, main ground blend here are not indirect only as the rest of our foreground objects. So what, what we want to do is just enable our indirect only option on those assets as well so that for our background layer and for our background view layer, those are only casting shadows on this layer and not actually being rendered directly. So uh, this should fix that issue. And now I'll just go to foreground and finally, Let's just render one more final test shot. I'll just go to render and render image and let's see what we get for our final shot. And uh, here we have it. This is our final render and composite just out of Blender. Of course, I'm going to composite with some atmosphere inside of After Effects, but this is looking pretty awesome here. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. I will be continuing this kind of apocalyptic disaster series of visual effects shots inside of Blender, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested in these kind of tutorials and leave a comment if you have something specific you'd like to see. I'll see you next time.